they were going to be doing a few different things with the Native Americans who lived in the eastern woodlands. And if you remember from last lesson, when we talked about the different cultural regions, the eastern woodland is this area here. So kind of going from the Mississippi River over to the coast here. So this whole area is the eastern woodlands. This is the area we're going to be talking about today. So for your assignment, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to open up your note sheet and we're going to take notes as I go through the lesson today. Then after that, we have a passage talking about one of the Native Americans we'll talk about today. And you'll have some questions to answer about the passage. And then finally, you'll have a little bit of homework, <laughs> basically just answering five questions, summing up what we talk about today. So go ahead and open up your note sheet. And when you pull it up, you'll have this here. Remember, click Edit Presentation, Edit in Browser. And then when it pulls up, you'll notice there's not text boxes today, so you will need to be inserting your own text boxes. As a reminder, click Insert, Text Box, and then it comes usually right in the middle of the page, so you'll need to move it, and then to size it, you put it to where you have two arrows like that, and then you size it to whatever size you need and then you put in your information there. You either double click and it highlights it all or click and drag and then you can put your information in there and it's good to go. So today we're going to be talking again about the Woodland Indians, the Eastern Woodland Indians. And if you look here, and again, if you can't see, you click view, zoom, put 100%, click okay. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is life in the Eastern Woodlands, kind of what they used, what they did, and how they lived. Now, because they lived in the woodlands, a common resource that was very plentiful was trees. And they were able to use trees to make a lot of different things. They used trees to make their canoes. They used trees to make their shelters. They used trees to make their weapons. You know, they would make their bows, their arrows, using the trees, using the wood from the trees. They'd also use the trees for their tools. The trees would also provide them food with, you know, like berries, plums, other fruits. So one thing that they used for, and we're putting this in here, you know, was food. They used the trees for food. Another thing I said they used the trees for was to make canoes. So you're putting canoes here. They also used the tree to make shelters. That's what they made their houses out of. The trees also are what they use to make their tools. And the trees are what they use to make their weapons. So because they lived in the woods, they lived in the forest and trees were readily available, you know, that's what they used to make a lot of their items. Now there were two different groups in the Eastern Woodlands. We had the Iroquois, and the Algonquin. So we're going to talk about both of them today. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Iroquois. If you see our note box, we're going to talk about where they lived, what language they spoke, what their villages were like, what their shelters were like, what food they ate, and how their government was set up. So the Iroquois, if we look back at this map, the Iroquois lived near the Great Lakes. So these lakes up here is the Great Lakes area. So the Iroquois lived here in this area. Now, if you think about our land, we're living here, and what our land is like, you know that our land is fantastic for farming. And so that's kind of, you know, thinking of the flat land, really great soil, woods, forests all around. That's what the Iroquois were living in. So on our note sheet, if we're looking at it, where they lived was near the Great Lakes. They lived near the Great Lakes. And the language they spoke was Iroquois. They spoke Iroquois. So when they were living here, they would find steep hills to build their villages on. Now they would do that either for protection or to help with flooding. You know, think about us when we build houses, you know, we're gonna make sure that we're not putting it down in a goalie because especially if it's near a creek or a river, 
because when it rains, it's going to flood. But it also gave them an advantage because if they were up on a steep hill, they could see enemies coming and it served as protection for them as well. So their villages were built on steep hills. Not in their villages, so they built those villages on steep hills, but they also surrounded them with something called a palisade, a P-A-L-I-S-A-D-E, a palisade. A palisade is this little type of fence. Oh, yes, because you, you could say it's a tall fence that surrounds the village. They took tall poles made from the trees to surround their village as protection. It kept out animals, kept out enemies, it just kept them safe. So they built their villages on a steep hill and put a palisade around their villages as well. Now, as you can see in this picture, you can kind of see it there. You can also see this picture here. This is what the Iroquois homes looked like. And then you can also see it on your note sheet as well. These houses are called long houses. These houses were made out of trees, long poles. You can see here how long they are. There's a person there to give you a comparison. You can see kind of the material it's built out of. And again, it was a long house. In this long house, they would have an extended family living in there. So it'd be mom, dad, kids, grandma, grandpa, sometimes aunts and uncles and cousins all living in this one house, in the long house. Now, they lived together and they also all worked together to take care of the food and take care of the land. You know, the saying, many hands make light, make light work. So since they were working all together, it did not take as much effort to get things accomplished. Things got done faster and it did not seem as much work for one group of people. Now what happened was the men would clear the fields and then the women and the children would plant the seeds and take care of the crops and then harvest the crops. The men also typically were the ones who would go out and hunt as well. And the foods that they really depended on to eat were corn, beans, and squash. So their main food was corn, beans, and squash. Because again, think about where they lived. You know, they relied heavily on farming because they had the great soil. So corn, beans, and squash were a big part of the Iroquois diet. Now the reason they planted them together is because they all work together to take care of each other. The beans, they planted the beans around the corn so the beans could climb up the corn. And then the beans also put in the nutrition into the soil that the corn needs. And then when they planted the squash, the big squash leaves would cover the dirt which prevented weeds from growing. And it also helped to keep the soil cool and keep it wet. So those three crops helped each other and grew well, really well together. Now, there was a problem because in this region, there was five different nations within the Iroquois nation. So five different groups. And they all decided or all thought they needed the best hunting land. And so they were always fighting over the hunting land until one day, one leader decided to say, you know what, enough is enough. He, one of his family members was killed over hunting land and he was expected to go kill the people who got his family member. And he said, no, something needs to be different. So he can, took his friend from another tribe, convinced the other person from the other tribe that they need to get together and join the five nations together. That way they could work things out peacefully. They're like, you know what, let's figure things out together instead of fighting all the time. So those five nations joined together and became the Iroquois League. So, so as you can see, we have the five nations here and then later on a sixth one joined and they decided to join together and make decisions together. They were still their own separate groups, but they joined together to make decisions together so they weren't constantly fighting. So they joined made what's called the Iroquois League. So their government was the Iroquois League. 
was the five nations came together. And you can see then they started what was called the Grand Council when big decisions need to be made like war or where to hunt, what to hunt, who gets what land. So they had the Grand Council come together to make decisions. The next group is the Algonquins. The Algonquins lived on the coastal plain, so they're more in this area, and then up here by the Great Lakes. So if you can see on this map, that's kind of where it's mountainous and rocky. So it's a little bit different than here in this part of the eastern woodlands. They're in more of the mountainous, rocky, coastal plain area. So on our notes, the Algonquin live in the coastal plains and near the Great Lakes. And their language, if you could take a guess, was Algonquin. Their language was Algonquin. Now their groups, each group would have one to 20 villages. So their villages were made up of one to 20 villages making up a group, and then there are several groups that made up the Algonquins. So you could think of it as like Algonquin would be Illinois, the groups would be Adams County, and then there's several villages within Adams County. So the Algonquins had many groups, and each group had about one to 20 villages. Their shelters were very similar to the longhouses, but shaped differently. They're called wigwams, W-I-G-W-A-M, wigwam. You can see in this picture here, this is what the wigwam looks like. So again, they took pieces of bark, covered poles, and they made their homes that way. You can also see here this picture that demonstrates what the wigwam looks like. So they lived in wigwams, and sometimes they lived in longhouses as well. But their shelters were the wigwam and longhouse. Now, because they lived in more of a rocky area, they did not depend as heavily on farming as the Iroquois did. The Algonquin relied more on fish because they were closer to some of these rivers and they were closer to the ocean. So they depended more on fish. So kind of their main food was fish. Now, the way their government was set up was one of two ways. Sometimes they would have one leader that was over one or two villages. So there might be one person just in charge. That'd be like maybe we had a mayor who was in charge of Camp Point and Golden. Or the other way that their government was set up is sometimes they would have two leaders within one village. So it'd be like if Camp Point had two mayors. Now, one of the leaders would deal with war. So, you know, types of punishment, dealing with war with other tribes, that kind of thing. And then the other leader would deal with peace. So making peace with other places, making peace within, you know, within the village. So I say it's kind of like having a bad cop, good cop kind of situation. So sometimes they would have one leader over two villages. Sometimes they would have two leaders within one village. That's how they ran their government. So now that's the difference between Algonquin and Iroquois, and both of these groups live in the eastern woodlands. So once you get that filled out, then you'll click close, and then you'll go next to this Daganawida passage. So Daganawida is that Iroquois that decided to make peace. So you're gonna come here, click edit presentation, edit in browser, And then once it pulls up, you'll need to click View, Zoom. And then again, you will need to add in text boxes to be able to put in your information. So you'll click Insert, click Text Box, drag the text box up to where you want it to be, and then in put your answers. So we're going to read up here about Daganawida. So in the late 1500s, starting here, Iroquois tribes battled among themselves. Often these battles were over control of hunting areas. According to one story, an Iroquois named Daganawida convinced a Mohawk leader named Hiawatha 
to join him in spreading the message that all shall receive the great law and labor together for the welfare of man. The result was a confederation called the Iroquois League. The League was made up of five nations of the Seneca, the Cayuga, the Onon Onondaga, the Oneida, and the Mohawk. A few, few years later, a sixth nation, the Tuscarora, joined the League. Each nation in the League governed itself, and problems were often solved by a vote. Important matters that affected all the League's nations, such as war, were made by a grand council of 50 chiefs from all nations. So now using this information that I just read, you're going to answer these five questions. First, you're going to tell me, number one, who was Daganawida? You're going to tell me who he was. Then number two, you're going to tell me, why did Daganawida think it was important to stop the fighting? Number three, you're going to tell me which tribes belong to the Iroquois League. Number four, which group made decisions that affected all the League's nations? So it's why I know the name of that group that met together to decide to make decisions about things that affected all the League's nations. One hint is look for this phrase here, decisions that affected all the League's nations. Look for that phrase in there. And number five. What do you think Daganawida meant when he said, all shall receive the great law and labor together for the welfare of man? So you're gonna answer those questions and then you'll click close. And you have one final last thing, the Eastern Woodlands Worksheet. So you here you have five questions and click edit presentation, edit in browser. And these five questions are a recap of what we've talked about today. So we'll click view, zoom, 100%. And then again, you're gonna insert your text boxes. And you're gonna answer these questions. Number one, what was the most valuable resource to the Woodland Indians? Number two, what type of land, or you know, like what was their area like did the Woodland Indians live in? Why did they pick that place to live? What are three things the Woodland Indians did for food? How did they get their food? What are two types of houses in the Woodland, the Woodland Indians lived in? What job would a male Woodland Indian have? What about a female Woodland Indian? What would they have? So you answer those five questions, click close, and once you have all three of these completely filled out, then you'll click turn it in. If you have any questions, definitely send me a message on Remind, send me an email, or send me a message on Teams.